Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener. Today, I am talking about ginger. Not necessarily this kind of ginger here. This is Awapui ginger. Let me bring you in here real close and show you why this stuff is special and how it's just a little bit different than your edible variety of ginger. So this Awapui ginger here is really cool. It's got this cone flower on it that if you squeeze it, it'll give you this nice little gooey gunk that if you, uh, you want to put it in your hair or if you want to have a nice little uh, natural cleanser this is uh somehow supposed to be some kind of a soapy conditioner i've never used it myself but uh, i think i might uh, just to try it because this is some really weird stuff and it just kind of goos everywhere Ugh, yeah that's slimy here's a little bit more of a mature uh, cone of it that turns red and i'm waiting for it to turn red all the way up and again it's just full of goo itself very cool gooey uh ew yeah now to begin with there's just a few things that i use of course you're gonna need some sort of rhizomes that you pick up from your local grocery store farmer's market wherever it is that you have found your starter gonna need some kind of a bucket i just like a nice shallow little this is a sterilite seven quart bucket i've drilled a few little holes down here in the bottom on the corners just for drainage and then of course you're going to need some sort of a medium to grow it in this is some extra that i had left over from when i was planting in some rosemary which is a very loose compost mix with some extra sand in it to make this mix here i just got a 50 pound bag of playground sand and thoroughly mixed it in with some well rotted compost this is just a professional mix of composted soil this stuff is really good here and the sand is just to make it a little bit better draining give it a little bit more to dry out the soil if you will just you don't want it to get super wet but you want it to stay moist that's for sure and if you don't have or don't want to use sand you can use vermiculite perlite whatever you like i just don't use any sort of a peat moss when it comes to potting up these little rhizomes right here now when it comes to choosing your rhizome for your ginger uh, I don't really don't have any sort of rhyme or reason for which ones I pick. I try to see if they've got like any growth nodes like here starting. Uh, there wasn't a really big selection. This one here has a little bit right here. Just there wasn't much of a selection and I think that's okay. I went ahead and rinsed these off under water just to get any sort of uh, junk off of it that may have been on them or if there's any sort of uh, growth inhibitor that they put on these. The next thing I do is I just rip and break off some chunks and pieces. Want to make sure that it's got at least a few little growth spots on it and i like to leave them about as big as i can honestly i would wish that, that wouldn't have come off but i'll go ahead and leave a few chunks and pieces in together that's this here is about as small as i would ever go and i only did that just because i went ahead and saw that it had some eyes on it so we'll go ahead and give this guy a run for its money or maybe use this for dinner maybe we should use this for dinner and with this one here i'm just going to pop a few pieces off here i'm gonna leave these a little bit bigger uh, let's go ahead and take this guy off right here just go ahead and snap it off. Normally, I would leave these out on the counter to dry just so that these would heal up real well. That way we're not introducing any sort of bacteria or disease into the fresh wound that we just caused right there. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill up my bucket here. Uh, most of the way, we'll call it, with this nice little potting mix I got. There we go, that should be good to start. I am gonna lightly pat this down just to make it nice and smooth and then just lay my chunks in here and give them a little bit of space in between so they can go ahead and grow, do whatever it is they're going to do, make individual plants, and hopefully not have the roots get too bound up in together. I want to leave them a little bit of gaps in between the edges because I, I want the roots to be able to grow out to the edges so that then I can see them. Now, once I got these placed, I'll go ahead and just cover them up just a little bit over the top. Not a whole lot needed about that much should be good that's about maybe a half inch get it padded down and i'll get some rainwater from my bucket give a little sprinkle until i see the water come out the bottom and this one here we're going to call done and just leave this sitting in a semi-shaded spot for the next few weeks and these will go ahead and sprout just like these guys have been doing this might be a little dry but that's okay and these I did pretty much the same way, filled it up about yay much, put the rhizomes down, then gave it a little cover up over the top, gave it some rainwater, and I've been giving it rainwater every other day, I think, for about the last three weeks. Now that I've got these all ready to go and planted in the ground, now I've got to pop them out of their little container. And there's, let's be super gentle about this. There we go. How, how super gentle can we be? 
just shake them. All right, and you can see this piece here, this was one really big piece that I left in here because I wanted to make sure this guy was as big as it could be when I was transplanting it out. And honestly, I could snap this thing in half and make two different plantings out of this if I really wanted to, but I'm gonna leave this guy nice and big. This one here was just a little piece. You can see how big of a little piece that was. And this one here was a really little piece. We're gonna put some of these in the pot to go inside over the winter. And some of these other ones, we're gonna plant outside to see how well it overwinters in our zone 8B, 9A area. Because one of the things that I really look forward to is finding plants, whoops, well, broke that one. But anyway, I'm trying to find plants that I can keep outside for the most part. I don't like to bring in a whole lot of plants over the winter. I like to have plants in my house every winter, but that's not really to say that I really want a bunch of plants in my house every single winter that I've got to keep bringing the same pots and the same plants in. I want to have something different every winter. And this winter, it looks like I'm going to have a lot of ginger and I've got, what was that other thing? Guava. I've got some guava that I'm going to bring inside because I'm not entirely sure how well it's going to do, as well as a few papayas. So it's going to be ginger, papaya, and guava. Interesting mix. And I'm thinking last year it was, this year I did a sweet potato, some bananas, I think ginger again. I think it was the awapui ginger. That's why I've got 15 plots of it around the yard here. I got a bunch of awapui ginger just kind of all over the place. But not all gingers are created equal. This one here, got it from the grocery store, I'm sure it tastes great. Awapui ginger, on the other hand, it's not all that great tasting. You can eat it, but I'm not sure why you'd want to if you have access to a good grocery store variety of ginger to use instead that tastes better. Okay, now I'm going to separate these out where I've got one large and one small on both my inside and outdoor, and it looks like I've got one extra one left over. So I'm going to go ahead and take this little tyke right here and put him in the pot with the other two because I'm not sure how well he'll do outside. This is a, a very, very small guy. Now when it comes to my flower pot here, I've got an interesting mix of old potting soil, tea, let's hear it. These are some tea grounds. I got some uh, smoker pellets that I got carbonized. You know, just a little mix of about everything. And I'm gonna add to this some just regular jungle growth potting soil to about the top. Oh, hey. I wondered where my pitcher went. How did it get in there? Anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and, no, well, I guess we're gonna just empty that bag there. Fill it most, most of the way with that uh, just regular potting soil mix there. And then fill up the top part with the more looser, well-draining, sa slightly sandy. Oh, I forgot to mention, that was uh, two bags of one and a half cubic foot of the jungle growth to one 50 pound bag of the playground sand. That's the mix that I use when it comes to those rhizomous, uh, shallow rooting kind of plants, such as turmeric, ginger, other things like that. Now I'm going to take my pot and go ahead and carefully place in my rhizomes. Give them a little bit of space in between so they got plenty of room to grow around. And then I'm going to go ahead and backfill them in with some of this sandy soil so that this way I know that it's going to drain out real well and it's not going to be leaving a bunch of moisture and water right up next to those roots and the rhizomes to cause rot because rot is not your friend. And there we go. Got these all planted up nicely. And I'll go ahead and get these watered in so those roots go ahead and get established and going. One thing of note is I did plant these just a bit deeper into the soil so that they can go ahead and stay down there real well. And then the new shoots will have to push up just that much harder, but then they'll also be that much more stable. I'm not sure if that's exactly the right way to do it, but that's the way I'm doing it. So now, planting in the ground. Okay, I'm not exactly sure where it is over here. I'm gonna plant these probably over here in this kind of area. I've got another awapui right here, and I don't wanna get confused for what's gonna be the awapui ginger, the more bitter, not exactly great eating ginger, and then plant it right next to some edible ginger. I don't want to get confused and accidentally pick up the wrong one. So I think eventually I'm going to go ahead and be pulling up all of these in the winter time or the late fall. Once it goes ahead and frosts and it, you know, goes dormant, I'll go ahead and pull those out and I'm going to plant them over on the other side of the yard where there's the big row of bananas. That way I've got all the non-edible, we'll call it more pretty, 
types of ginger. Yeah. Go ahead and put all those kinds of ginger over there on that one side and then have all the edible gingers over here on the other side of the yard. That way I don't accidentally eat the wrong one. Not that it would hurt me. It just wouldn't be that good. So I'm gonna go ahead and rake away some of these wood chips. I think I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go a little bit closer, closer to the fence. That way I can start making a little bit more of a, a pathway to go through here. That way I can get around my bamboo that I've got over here that might need to be moved as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these planted real close up by the fence and kind of up here underneath these bananas and go ahead and make a row of them back here behind the bananas. That way they get some good shade or filtered sun pretty much all day long. And if you're enjoying this video and you want to like and subscribe, I'd appreciate that. It really makes my worms wiggle. Ooh, wow, we've got two different kinds of worms. Usually I get the same kind of worm when I dig in the same spot. We got two different kinds of worms, a red wriggler and uh, it looks like a night crawler. Ooh. Now I already know that my yard is in general, it's very wet, it's very mucky. It's just not a great place to try and grow things well into the ground. So I plant my plants accordingly and a little different. If you live in a very wet climate or you've got this really thick, mucky, heavy clay soil or the sandy kind of clay that I've got that no matter what you do, the water just will not penetrate through. Here's what I do whenever I'm planting new plants. I don't dig a hole, but you will see that I've got a lot of wood chips right here. So what I do is I pull apart my wood chips and I go ahead and expose where the ground would be. And I take my plant and I set it right on top or sometimes I will even go ahead and lay a nice little layer of some potty mix down and then set it down and then plant a mound up to the level. Oh, hey, another worm. Anyway, I go ahead and I plant the, wow, that is one really wiggly worm. So I go ahead and plant at ground level and then layer my dirt on top. That way it goes ahead and gets rid of all the excess moisture and any extra rainfall that comes down. It's not just gonna sit there on the roots and just rot them all out. And that's one of the things you really have to be careful with, with uh, this kind of a rhizome. The edges especially will rot out very quickly, which then rots out the entire thing. And then you don't have any ginger anymore. And that is very not good. Once I have everything nice and covered up with the dirt, I go ahead and backfill it with just a little bit of wood chips. Oh, wow, that is a thorny, thorny vine. Gotta watch out for that guy. I go ahead and just cover everything back up so it stays, ow, that's, ow, man, okay. I'm hitting a bunch of thorny vines. I'm gonna go pull some thorns out of my fingers and then I'll get this thing all covered up nicely with some wood chips. Ah, I got like four or five of them in there. There we go, got them nicely covered up with just a light little bit of mulch and those will settle in real well. And they've got a few months left still of this year because it's only the middle of August to go ahead and get its roots going down there into the soil. And from there, we'll go ahead and just lightly water them in, give them a little bit of water every few days and hopefully they'll stay happy and very productive. And then we can fill in this whole area right behind the bananas in between the banana line and the fence. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you keep those thumbs green, pass away, and know that you are appreciated.